Hey there and welcome to this tutorial for Oceans by Hillsong United. And I want to be honest with you for a second, this song has massively stressed me out. Not because of the song itself, not because it's a Christian song, because quite honestly, if people don't like this video or like the playlongs, they can just skip ahead to the next playlong. It has nothing to do with that. It's the length of the song and it's caused me, as I deal with basically seven different approaches to strumming within a song to have to actually create tutorial notes. And let me show you this. Um, I've made three pages of tutorial notes for this video for a song that only has five chords. And as a result, I've started actually making these little um, tutorial notes for all of the videos that you'll see in the future because it just, again, it's how I would normally teach it, but I, putting it on paper ahead of time allows me to work through it, especially when you have something like this song. So Oceans, it's been around, I think, since 2013. It's been covered a lot. It's been used in churches. I know my own church used it a lot. If you want to see another tutorial about how to play it, and this is a tutorial for the play along more than a tutorial for just the song, although both will work, check out what Katie Denure has done on One Music School. I'll put a link down below and maybe even a link in a card up here to her video and I think she even shows like how to finger pick the whole thing although I will say that I don't hear finger picking throughout although you can certainly do what you want to do with it. So let's begin with the chords that you'll need and we'll start with G C E A ukulele and for G C E A ukulele I'm using my Makala MK-CE concert ukulele. It's a beginner level ukulele and the only difference that I have between one you could buy today is that this one has a rosewood fretboard and bridge which they now make walnut because of some restrictions on woods from other countries and then um, I have Martin M600 strings on here fluorocarbons versus the Aquilas that it would come with. So taking a look at the chords there are five chords you need with well, whether you're playing GCEA or DGBE, but in this case, GCEA, and let's take a look at them. The first chord is the A minor chord. Second finger goes fourth string, second fret. The next chord is the G chord. The first finger goes on the third string, second fret. The second finger goes on the first string, second fret. And the third finger goes on the second string, third fret. That's your G chord. The next chord you need is the C chord. The third finger will go on first string, third fret. The next chord you need is F. The first finger will go on the second string, first fret, and the second finger will go on the fourth string, second fret. That's your F chord. And the last chord you need is the D minor chord. If you're on that F chord already, all you have to do is add your third finger to the third string, second fret. But starting from scratch, first finger, second string, first fret, second finger, fourth string, second fret, third finger, third string, second fret. That's your D minor chord. This is my mainland baritone ukulele, cedar top, rosewood back and sides. Just recently got it. It was a factory defect model, mainly because of some light scratching up here and a little stain issue right here, if you can see that a little bit and I'm fine with it because it sounds great. Love it so far. So on DGBE, same five chords. Let's do them. The first one is the A minor chord. The first finger will go on the second string, first fret. The second finger will go on the fourth string, second fret. And the third finger will go on the third string, second fret. That's your A minor chord. The next chord you need is the G chord. The third finger will be on the first string, third fret. The next chord you need is the C chord. The first finger will go on the second string, first fret. The second finger will go on the fourth string, second fret. The next chord you need is the F chord. And again, it's a tricky chord. If you're just beginning playing baritone ukulele, stick with it. Your first finger will cover strings one and two at the first fret. Second finger will go into string three, fret two and the third finger will go to string four, fret three. That's your F chord. And learn how to not press down any harder than you need to with that one. You can make it fuzzy for a while until you find out how hard you have to press to actually make it sound. 
And the last chord you need is the D minor chord. The first finger will go on the first string, first fret, second finger on the third string, second fret, and third finger on the second string, third fret. That's your D minor chord. And before I go to strumming, I also want to say one more thing about the chords. I hear a shift in the progressions where the, the beginning of the song a lot of times will end on an F chord. Well, in the middle of the song, I hear that shift to be a D minor chord for the rest of the song. So that's the way that I've written it out. In a lot of the arrangements that I've seen and looked at and listened to and compared, they show an F throughout. So that is something for you to be aware of. But remember, the F and the D chord, at least on GCEA ukulele, are only one chord apart. So let me switch to my other ukulele. I'm going to switch to my Makala. There we go. And let's take a look at the strumming. Now, I've mapped out what happens the whole song. And there are basically eight strumming sections, but one repeats. One section is just single strums. That goes to about one minute in. The next one is a finger pick section. So we'll take a look at that. And that goes about one minute, 25 seconds in. The next one becomes just eight down strums. And we'll take a look at that. And that goes until about two minutes in, a little bit further than that. Then another strumming pattern, and that lasts until about three minutes. Then we're back to single strums for a long time. Then there's a strum, and then I add a tap to it, which kind of uh, echoes what's happening with the real song. And then another strumming pattern. And then finally single strums with, with the little running part that you hear with the lower notes of the guitar or with the bass guitar. So let's take a look at each of these sections and go through it. For the first section, section one, single strums, use a finger, use a felt pick, um, use your thumb, whatever works best for you. And the tempo here is about 60 beats per minute. So it's just gonna go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I like using my thumb with that because it just gives you a thicker chord. Now, I've thought about how this song is so open so much, and I wonder if that's a theological comment. Like in Genesis 1, 2, there's a talk about the Spirit of the Lord hovering over the waters, and because the song is called Oceans and Staying Afloat and Keeping Your Head Above the Waves, I kind of wonder, is that like representing God just kind of hovering over the nothingness of water? I don't know. Just wondering if there's deeper meanings there probably not but just wondering about that so that is the first section and the fifth section that happens twice in the song so for about the first minute and then for about a minute and a half starting about three minutes in all right now let's take a look at finger picking for this style i use a, a device created by a guy named mike lynch who passed away about two years ago january i think of 2018 and Basically, he talked about you pluck strings one, two, and four using your first finger, second finger, and thumb. And the thumb plays string four. The first finger plays string two. And the second finger plays string one. And what you do is you pluck all three of those at the same time in on each other like that. And then you alternate by plucking string three with your thumb. So let's practice maybe just on the F chord, what that looks like. Okay, so make the F chord with your left hand, whether you're doing GCEA or DGBE, and then pluck and alternate. It becomes a pretty natural feel after a while. Let's try it slowly. One and two and ready and go. Honestly, that's about the speed of the song so you don't have to do it any faster than that and let's do it with the changes now so f for two beats c for two beats g for four beats so that repeats three times then f for three beats and g for one beat and then you'd actually go to the a minor chord but that's where the song changes again so let's do it here we go one and two and three and four and f c F, C, G, back to F. Back to F now. One, two, three. Now 
down G. And then you end on the A minor chord. So that's the finger picking that I would do from about a minute in to about a minute and a half in. Then the next part, when you hit that A minor chord, this is something that I would suggest simply doing all downstrokes. And it's going to be three beats of A minor, a G for one beat, four beats of C, four beats of G, four beats of F. And it's going to like this. Down, 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 down. Try with me. One, two, ready, go. So the next pattern I hear is again in that faster subdivision of the four four time. So we'd be going down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, down. Try muting your strings with your left hand and just doing that, going down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, down. So let's try that once with the sequence as it appears in the song. That F, C, and G thing. Let's do it. One, two, three, four. Down, down, up, down. actually has some other chords that get added to it but that's the next section with the down down up down down part then we go back to single strums which we don't have to do again but now let's go to the part that I hear for about a full minute of strumming and then a tap starting at about 4 30 4 minutes 30 seconds into the song and it's gonna go like this one tap three four one tap three four one tap three four one tap three four and you'll hear that in the recording where that happens now if I try playing that on my baritone that has a little bit bigger soundboard I think we will hear that tap more clearly let's try it one two three four strum tap three four three four three, four, three, four. Just giving it a shot, seeing how that works. So that happens for about another minute. And then I hear yet another strumming pattern to a pattern that goes down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up. It's pretty simple. You know, if you just go down, up, down, up the whole time like this, you just cut out the first of those. So the pattern is A minor for three beats, G for one beat, C for four beats, G for four beats, and then D minor for four beats. And this is that change we're in the song where now I'm hearing the D minor at the end of that phrase. Let's try it. One, two, three, four. that we have to add is simply this running part if you want to do it on GCA ukulele it's second third fifth on the first string and it happens on the fourth beat here's how it goes one two three four one two three four and a one two three four one two three Four and a one, two, three, four, one, two, 
three, four and a one, two, three, four, one. Now let's do that on the baritone ukulele. The um, finger picking part changes because you're now in different tuning. The finger picking is going to be a one, three on the second string. Open one, three, and that's going to happen on beat four. A one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. E M. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. E and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. E and F. Two, three, four. One. Okay, believe it or not, I think that gets us through all the various parts that I see of this song. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to put a link to this tutorial note on the description, which will take you to the blog, and you can access this. Now, this is not the chord chart of what happens in the song. It's simply taking a look at the different strummings and giving you some suggestions of what to do and if you want it, it's there for you. Uh, if you want to, leave a comment and let me know if that's beneficial to you, if that's worth making for you. I know it's helpful to me as a teacher, sort of like making a lesson plan. But if it's useful for you as a viewer and somebody wanting to learn these songs and to put them into your fingers, uh, please let me know. So thanks for watching this video of Oceans by Hillsong United, a tutorial to support the playlongs that were created for that. And please consider subscribing, and we'll catch you next time.